السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مائی ڈیئر آڈینس ویلکم ٹو دا تسکیہ ورک شاپ بینگ ہیلڈ ان نیو یارک سٹی آن آگسٹ آن سوری آن مارچ ٹوینٹی سکس آف ٹو تھری ٹوڈے از اے ویری بلیس ڈے فار می ٹو بی ایبل ٹو یو نو ڈسکس ود یو سم آف دا اسپرچل ایسپیکٹس آف فیسٹنگ ایز وی آر الحمد للہ سیلنگ تھرو دا مت آف رمادان وچ ہیز ڈانٹ اپون اس بائی دا بلیسنگ آف اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ سو وی شوڈ آلویز ریمائنڈ آور سیلوز اینڈ ریمائنڈ ایچ ادر ہاؤ ٹو ریپ میکسیمم بینیفٹس آف دس بیوٹیفل منتھ آف رمادان گیننگ اسپرچولیٹی اینڈ نیئرنیس ٹو اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ از ایوری بڈیز ایوری مسلمس گول اٹ شوڈ بی ایوری بڈیز گول ہاؤ وی کین اچیو دیٹ دیر آر مینی میتھڈس Uh, and ways to at attain nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there is some uniqueness about fasting which, which draws us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That nearness, that, that uniqueness about the fasting is something that I, I will highlight upon today. Uh, many aspects of Ramadan remain unaddressed or not as much discussed as they should be. Uh, Ramadan is a very unique month. It dawns upon us once a year uh, on the ninth month of uh, Hijri calendar and it comes to us with a message and that message is very subtle. Sometimes people forget that message and they don't realize what that message is. The message is that behind every sin it's not necessary to have shaitan. It could be your nafs too. So pay attention to your nafs that you know that in this month shayateen are all chained they are out they are out of sight they are out of mind but why is it that people are still uh, indulging in sins may Allah protect all of us and all of them and why is it that people are not really you know getting nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so here is a point to ponder upon that uh, it's our nafs which is invoking us to do some things which are not really uh, which are not really uh, agreeable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why we get away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even in this blessed month of Ramadan. May Allah protect us from that, uh, from that ill effect. So, uh, what, you know, this is the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has given us as a, uh, as a reminder uh, for this month and also in the same month He has given us a treatment that how we can control our nafs, uh, our inner self or our carnal self. This is, the se this is our inner self which can goad you on to do crimes, to do ill effects, to do bad things in life that can end you in tr land you in trouble in this world and the world hereafter. So the month of Ramadan especially and the fasting in, in, uh, in general has a great power to control your nafs in the way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, it is very beneficial, fasting itself is very beneficial in burning your sins. The month Ramadan comes from Ramaz, that means to burn off and it, it can burn off your sins and hence purify your heart. Similarly, it can, it, can, it can cleanse your soul from the ill effects of lying, backbiting, uh, hurting others, envy, jealousy or any other sins that you have committed, uh, your fasting can cleanse your soul from those effects. So when once your soul and heart is free from the sins you have committed, you feel elevation. Your soul feels elevated. That means you, you attain nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why fasting has profound spiritual dimensions in it and also far-reaching effects. We see in all the you know, in all the lineages of the Tasawwuf, fasting has been heavily prescribed by all Sufi saints, not only to their murids, also by themselves they practice it. And they, they practice it on a constant basis. You know, they are perpetual in a state of fasting throughout the year. By that I mean that they are excessively fasting in the month of Ramadan, uh, sorry, in the, throughout the year, and especially in the month of Ramadan, so that they can keep cleansing and purifying their souls and that's what they teach and preach to their murids. Um, 
Something to highlight upon is the fact that every worship has two aspects. One is the apparent aspect which is the reward system, reward aspect and the other aspect is the spiritual aspect. So most of us are aware of the, of the reward aspect of things that okay if you perform such and such uh, ibadat you are going to gain this much reward. And no doubt you get that which is good and which is commendable and which should be strived for. But that is not enough. There, which, with each ibadat there is attached an spiritual aspect. That should not be overlooked. In, in, in fact that should be strived for. Without attaining that spiritual aspect of any ibadat you are not going to complete your ibadat. That is why uh, fasting is considered complete when you not only fast with your stomach but you, but you fast with your eyes, with your ears, with your speech, and with your heart. Um, according to one hadith's mafhum, some people don't get nothing out of their fasting except hunger and thirst because they did not attain, they did not live by the values of the, of the fasting that they were supposed to live by. They did not uh, observe all the rules and regulations and all the etiquettes of fasting. That's why they did not get anything except hunger and fast and hence their fasting is not uh, approved. Uh, similarly, it comes about uh, the five-day obligatory salat that, you know, it, uh, the, the, the salat, in the salat, the tanha anil fahshai wal munkar, that this salat, the five-time obligatory prayer is supposed to guard you against immorality. Now if somebody is not getting modesty and morality it means that he is lacking that essence, that spirituality that that Salat and Namaz was supposed to give him. So every ibadat, every worship of religion of Islam has its spiritual dimensions and we should look for them and we should work for them. Only that's how that's how you can get the nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some benefits of fasting are very apparent and very clear which are the social benefits and the biological benefits. Social benefits we are all aware that when we, when we experience hunger firsthand we develop empathy for our less fortunate brothers and sisters who are not getting enough food on a daily basis and they are experiencing hunger on a daily basis. So that creates a bonding for humanity and that you know invokes us to to, to, to provide them with sustenance or whatever we can do to help them out. That's a social benefit and we definitely reap that. Uh, the biological benefits are definitely there that you know after having overeaten the whole year now Allah has given you opportunity to rectify your habits and fix your overeating habits and detox your body. And this is today scientifically, scientifically proven, which is not needed to prove any hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the Allah's hukum is enough for us to, you know, to follow, uh, alhamdulillah, and that's what we do. So the, 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 the biological benefits of fasting are very clear that it helps you detoxify the body from, you know, ill effects of overeating or dangerous kind of foods that you have taken in. Now here people fall prey to some fallacies and they get confused and sometimes they lose courage to fast on, on one pretext or the other. For example their excuses are that they cannot uh, fast because they develop headaches or they experience hunger pangs or they experience uh, weakness during fasting or they lose focus during fasting. Well. Exactly that's why the, 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 the fasting is mandated upon you to get rid of these withdrawal symptoms. These are not the actual causative symptoms of your um, of fasting. These are the withdrawal symptoms of your bad habits which you stopped in Ramadan. So now those symptoms are appearing and showing you that you are withdrawing from nicotine, from tobacco, from smoking or from excessive caffeine intake. That's why you have developed headache or uh, you know hunger pangs or something like that. So the idea is to, to um, mitigate those symptoms and to bring your life into balance and to give you the pointer and uh, you know the, the uh, indicator that you were eating excessively, you were, you were 
taking caffeine excessively, you were smoking or you were indulging in some other bad habits which when withdrawn are giving you the, the symptoms which were not supposed to be there in the first place. So this is exactly these symptoms. From these symptoms you can learn how to tailor your life and how to custom make your life and how to improve your life biologically and spiritually. Once you curb your biological appetites, your spiritual appetite gets to get, becomes satisfied itself. And it gets to the point that you start feeling nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah is always near to us. But we have to feel His nearness. Only then it's a very enjoyable experience. Last but not the least, I will highlight and I will touch upon briefly about the, 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 the beautiful uh, time of Suhoor, uh, which, is, uh, which is also a time of very barakat. And unfortunately, people, instead of making it barakat, they make it a burden on them by overindulging in eating and all that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through His Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, gave us a message, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُسَلُّونَ عَلَى الْمُتَسَحْحَرِينَ That Allah and His uh, angels are sending blessing upon those who are eating that suhoor, the pre-fasting meal. But look at the condition of the people today. They have forgotten that barakat being sent down upon us. They are indulging in overeating and overeating at that time until they tank up beyond their capacity. And then they forget instead of that barakat, they make it a burden for themselves. And then they blame it on, on, on the fasting that they have not been able to, uh, you know, to, to fast comfortably or they have not been able to digest food comfortably. Well, you did it yourself. You have to pay attention that this barakat is put in by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it will, it will start, it will kick in once you follow the right protocol. And uh, uh, don't forget that, you know, to, to, to the fasting person, Allah feeds himself. Allah will never make you uh, lose, Allah will never make you lose consciousness or will never make, make you lose energy just by, just by fasting. Allah will feed you and will give you enough energy so that you can sustain through the day. But we have to pay attention to the fact that that beautiful moments when Allah is sending a special uh, mercy and blessings upon the people uh, should be really, you know, welcome in the way it should be, in, not in the way that we start to hurt ourselves. Having said that, I have request for all the people in the world who are fasting, please fast with special love for this ibadat. Don't fast with a, with a sentiment of burden. Don't fast with a thought of a burden upon you. This is, these are few numbered days given to us. Make most use of these. Otherwise, the time will fly. Many months have many, many years have passed uh, without making any uh, gainful activity in our lives and so will this month pass away if we don't care of it take if we don't take care of it so please be attention uh, be attentive to this uh, Ramadan which is a very time time sensitive ibadat and once you achieve the nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through listening to Quran through staying away from all the you know evil activities that we have been engaged in the past we can attain nearness to Allah subhanahu Wa otherwise, uh, otherwise, uh, you know, the life will go on and it will take you towards the end of your life journey without any uh, mean, meaningful gain and that is not recommended by any teachings of Islam. May Allah give us uh, and protect us and give us the education and knowledge to act upon our good deeds.